Thought it'd be fun to do a Q&A with the one and only Kira. Answer some of you guys' questions. You guys have a lot of them. Some and juicy yeah, ones. Yeah, some juicy ones. So instead of beating around the bush, let's just go ahead and get right into these questions. Question number one. How do you feel about Kira's new boyfriend? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I was definitely shocked at first. It was definitely an adjustment. Um, a little, I wouldn't say it caught me off guard, but kind of. Yeah, but definitely. <laughs> it's just weird because of who it was. Truthfully, right. if she dated anybody else, I wouldn't care. Um, the positives of it have been that the kids were already comfortable with him, already kind of knew him, and so the transition into that was a little easier, which is kind of nice, but it was still really, really awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> Do you feel like it's better? Um, yeah, I feel like our friendship isn't there anymore, but hey, that's that's what it has to be. It's just, yeah, you guys are doing your thing. Question number two. Any regrets on how you handled the split? I think every breakup is going to come with regrets, and especially in the sense of how things are handled. There's really no perfect way. I do kind of regret how I handled things online. Actually, not kind of. A lot. I do feel like the, I was trying to pretend I was okay when truly I wasn't, and I should have accepted and em not embraced, but it, like just been okay with having emotions at the time and then also I think I should have given you more space and not tried to be friends right away. Yeah, I could see that. I regret the way I acted out of emotion towards the end of our relationship because I saw it coming. Lashed out a few times. I hate that I did that. Wish we went to therapy like before, the minute you started having those feelings I wish you would have told me we could have tried right. going to therapy. I would say for those of you who are feeling any sort of way towards your significant other, let them know immediately. Mm -hmm. Seek therapy. Try to fix it as soon as possible and nip it in the butt before it becomes an overwhelming, overwhelming feeling that you can't escape anymore, you know? Question number three. I want to know why she's all of a sudden adventurous with Preston, yet she isn't with you. I actually read this question before we answered it on camera, and I was a little confused because I, I'm not adventurous. Like, I don't do any of the things that you wanted to do, like skydiving, rock climbing. Mm -hmm. Like, all those things that you love, I still don't do. I'm guessing that this person means, like, traveling, because that's the only thing adventurous that I do now that I didn't do before. And that's only because I had my kids all the time before, and now I go a week without them. So, yeah. you know... I have time to do I feel things. like you still traveled while you were with me. I too. did too, but yeah. that's the only thing I can think that they're referring to. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing, huh? I was like, oh, because I haven't really, like, keep up with your yeah. social media, and so I was wondering, like, oh, has she been more adventurous? I was actually kind of proud of you. I was like, oh, well, whatever it takes for you to be more adventurous, yeah. I feel like it just brings more opportunities to you. You get yeah. to have more experiences in life. And so if that's what it took, whatever, at least yeah. you're doing it. I do think I'm more adventurous in my own ways. But if you're talking about the type of Oscar adventure, I will never do those things. That's not yeah. my personality. It doesn't matter who I'm with. What I do and don't do is based off of what I do and don't want to do, not who I'm with, if that makes sense. Question number four. Oscar always says that he wants to move to a different place. Do you think that will be possible? I am dying to move back to California. I feel like there's so much more opportunity for me there. I feel like the kids have a village out there. They would be able to grow up around their cousins, uh, aunts and uncles, everything. You know what I mean? I guess they don't really have cousins, but I consider my baby brother their cousin right now. Yeah, which they do love. Yeah, and so I don't. I would die. You don't think you'd ever move back? I don't think we could ever afford California. And if we both moved back right now, you would be living with your mom. For a or, bit. or some sort of family. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what my situation would be. I'm willing to move, but not to California. There's no way. I would be struggling for the rest of my life, and I don't ever want to be housebroke, and that's what I would be in California no matter what. Also, yes, it would be beneficial to live close to family, but because we pay so little to live here, we can afford to travel to see our family. And to be honest, I think Oscar and I... Well, I guess I can't speak for you anymore, but mm -hmm. there was a point in our life where we didn't like to be around family that much, and I do think that feeling would come back if we lived around them. Plus, our kids are used to around here. I love the environment around here, like the Four Seasons. So there's really is benefits to both. Like, don't get me wrong. California has things that's great about it, but there's also things about California that's absolutely horrible. Yeah, everywhere. And yeah. those are the things for me that I just can't see making work. So who knows what the future brings, but I definitely don't think California's in it for me. Now what Oscar chooses to do is never like in my control, but obviously I want him around the kids and we've talked about different options as far as in the future, if he does move there, how would the kids work? So we've explored those options and we may again in the future, but for now, 
I'm staying here. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say we didn't like to be around family, though. I would say that we were just always busy doing our own thing. We were really high energy. And yeah, that's like I'm just putting it in a very quick way. Yeah. Like, obviously, we love our family. Both of us get along with both of our families. Yeah, yeah. But I just mean, like, we aren't people who are around our families all the time. All right. Well, either way, I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> watch. You're going to see. Well, I believe you'll make it happen. And you're coming. Watch. No, no, that's the you're part. right. You're right. You're right. I don't care about you. The kids are coming. No, they're not. <laughs> Question number five. Do you feel guilty that you created a broken family for your kids? Yes, I feel terribly guilty about this one. It is hard, but I have a little bit of a different opinion because yes, it didn't work out ideally and mm. you know, it's different, but realistically, every family has their own version of what family is. And this is just our version. Mm -hmm. And I do think there's a lot of positives in the way we're doing it because now our kids see us both happy and healthy, maybe not together, but they see it that in the first place. And that's not something I feel like they really saw when we were together. They see that it's okay that sometimes things don't work out that you shouldn't settle, not just like for a partner, I'm not saying that, but mm -hmm. like in general, like there's a lot of positives. So yes, it's not ideal, but I do think that there is positives and our kids are happy. But do you think there's more positives than negatives? Yes. I think the negative is that other people in the world have families that are together and they look at them and are envious, possibly. That's not something they've ever said, but it's a possibility. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, this is what they know as their family. Yeah. And they're okay, this is what they, they don't know anything different. So they're happy, you know? Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, my family's, well, everybody I know actually has a broken family. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the term broken family because I grew up in a gr broken family. Yeah, I had a right, really right. rough childhood. It was very they different than this. Family. Yeah, and so, no, I, I don't like that term yeah, because right, right. our kids are happy. They have a really good life. Sometimes I'm like, you guys need some hardships to <laughs> make you, like, humble because, yeah, but I don't know. Obviously, it wasn't ideal. However, I yeah. still think it was necessary for our situation. Question number six. Does either of you pay child support? No. No, we both have 50-50 of the kids, mm -hmm. so that's just not like something. We decided, yeah, we need yeah. to do. And last but not least, question number seven. <laughs> Does Kira's BF get jealous that you and Kira still spend time together? I'm actually curious about this one. This is, well, first of all, I can't speak for him. That can yeah. be something that he can like get on social media and talk about it if he ever desired to. But I can say that like we have very healthy conversations and we've, you know, had many conversations about this. Not many, but we've had like a few because I always want to make sure that I'm respecting both mm -hmm. myself, you, him. Like I want everybody to be comfortable, which sometimes it is hard in life when you're mediating that many yeah. people. But my kids are number one. You know that. He knows that. Yeah. That's all that matters. It doesn't really matter to me if anybody gets jealous or not because my kids, that's what matters. That's so, true. yeah. I can't speak for him though. Okay, so I have an, a follow-up question No, from you that. said seven questions. <laughs> I know. I guess you're right. But it seems like you're learning from our past relationship and applying that into your new relationships. Is mm -hmm. that true? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely like most things that I mm -hmm. regret in our relationship. I have changed like especially our respect for each other. I'm not sure... We ever had respect for each other. Well, we used to joke around a lot, which, yeah, we, I yeah. thought it was funny. And, like, we we both thought it was banter and stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you hear the same jokes over and over and over, they become not funny. And then they just become kind of rude, which, yeah. I don't know. I think that was from our high school mentality. We brought that into our relationship since we got together so young. Right. There's definitely a lot. I mean, just in general, from 18 to 26, there's a lot that you learn. Yeah. Or we got together when we were 17. Yeah. 17 to 26. But especially in the last year, I've learned so much about friendships, relationships, myself, mm -hmm. how to respect myself. Because truly, if you don't love and respect yourself, you can't provide that for somebody else. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of things. And I mean, there was goods about our relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be like, it was all bad because that's not true. Mm -hmm. But there definitely was a lot of toxicity. Yeah, we were just too young and we didn't know better. We were really immature. I feel like it honestly, it's sad that it took this, but mm -hmm. it took this to like learn more about how friendships work, right. how relationships should yeah. be. But that's good that it sounds that like you're applying those things into your new relationship. Um, it sounds like it's healthier, which is great. I hope yeah. I have the same thing when I do find a future relationship. And this also taught me to pick up on red flags before, like as you're dating. 
That, oh, sorry, it was key. Basically <laughs> saying I had red no, flags no. that you could have paid attention <laughs> to. Well, no, but like, like things that I didn't like in our relationship, I can already spot and I've been, it's been easier to spot earlier into like dating than ever before. And it's like, well, oh. I think that also is just kind of like you realize what you're willing to put up with and what you're not willing yeah, to put up with. Exactly. So like the term red flags, that's, yeah, yeah, you're oh, right. I don't, I can't speak for you, but I'm just saying for me, that is something like there's things in our relationship that I was like, okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'll put up with it. I'll put up with it. And it's like, yes, there is always good and bad in your partner. There is going to be things that you don't like and you have to weigh out the goods and the bads, but it's also okay to have boundaries with certain things. And I really don't think either of us had boundaries that should have been there. Yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't know better. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy to think that that's the life we lived, huh? It's not, it's not that it was bad. It was just like so naive. That's yeah. what we did. We were so naive. Yeah. I wonder if we still are and we're going to look back on this and be like, damn, we were well, idiots back then. Well, you always learn. We'll probably look back at this and think different things, you know, but I yeah. do think that, uh, and this is another benefit for our kids. Like if our kids would have grown up seeing our relationship that way, they would have gone into relationships like that. And yes, they'll probably still make similar mistakes because that's just the process of learning and growing. Yeah. But I do think that hopefully they can see again that like, it's not okay not to have respect in a relationship. You do need boundaries and like all the different things. So yeah, man, this is a huge learning curve. Very, very interesting. I think to sum up our entire relationship, it's just that we were way too young. Mm -hmm. We were naive. We thought we knew better. And man, it's just so both of our egos were too big. Yeah. Our egos were too big. It's so sad because dang, it just, I mean, I'm very happy and I would never take back what we did because I have my four beautiful children. We were able to live an amazing life, but I do feel like a little bit embarrassed that we we promoted young relationships and showing people that we could do it the right way together. And now it's kind of like, oh, we're just the t- statistic. I don't know. I feel like we should be proud of what we have achieved and not just because yeah. it didn't work out ideally, throw it all like it all was bad. Yeah, you're right, huh? I don't know why I keep looking at it like that. Maybe because it was just such a big life change and we're yeah. still working through it. I'm like, oh, man, I messed up. <laughs> so to sum it all up, we're doing great. We're working on each other. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, we are working on bettering ourselves separately and using the lessons we learned over this last year to better our own lives now. We were a little too young. We were a little too naive. So learn from us, mature a little more before you decide to make such life decisions like we made. And um, yeah, I feel like that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this update video slash Q&A and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.